Okay. Uh, so lecture number ten. I will start review what we learned at the last lecture. And I'm sure that you were really confused at the last lecture because I gave you too much dishes. I said five dishes I gave you. And I do understand that those were beyond of your capability to enjoy the food which I apply, supplied it to you. So at the end of the last lecture, I suggested it to you not to try to digest all of the dishes I gave you, but just to look at it and analyze it. What those really mean. Okay. So we will, we need to review it. Otherwise you will have a big trouble. You feel like going somewhere in the mid mist. Okay. So you cannot see it and you will really afraid to step one forward. So let me give you some guideline or flag that can guide you which method you have to take to look at specific vibration characteristics. Okay? Especially we were really struggled by the word random. So what is a random? So random input. What is it? Okay. Let's start with what you normally experience in your daily life. For example, when you come this lecture hall, you might take the route to the start with your dormitory and then go to the right hand side of your gym and go down and pass the uh, the uh, the road where the campus policeman is really controlling controlling your work and so on. And some people, some students may take another route to come over here. Okay? But, um, but as long as you come from dormitory to this lecture hall, the vibration you will feel, you, you feel for example, look like this. Let's assume that is the uh, vibration you feel. And so this is the vibration this student can feel. And the vibration that another student can feel may look different in detail. They look different in, in detail because their weight is different and their step size is different. Right? So I can say this is another student's vibration. OK? 
Okay. For lady students' vibration might be a little bit smaller. Sometimes, but it's overall look not quite very much different. Okay. Or imagine that we are shooting rocket. Okay. Our first, the space rocket will be launched at December 22nd, which is happened to be my wife's birthday. So uh, I'm very proud to have a first space rocket launched at my, to celebrate my wife. I didn't influence any <laughs> to the government to decide the uh, that date, but when the that rocket go up in the space, the rocket would experience some excitation due to turbulence. Okay, that excitation would be very complicated compared with the deterministic excitation, for example, sinusoidal excitation or periodic excitation. But nevertheless, as we anticipated, each set of experiment is different in detail, but in overall sense, it is quite similar. Okay? So there must be some measure that can represent the similarity of each event. Okay? Let's accept that those general idea in the beginning. So it is random. It is not deterministic. But there is a, some measure that can represent randomness. What is it? What is it? That is our question. Okay. What measure really represents the randomness we, we have been talking about. Very special, I mean, very interesting issue. Okay, some, uh, some guy who has an interest in stock market or the thing, hey, if I know that measure, then I might be able to get or estimate how much money I will get after one year from now. Yes, yes, that random. The measure, that measure. Okay? Let's say this is the force I experienced, and this is a force he experienced, and this is a force she experienced. And then I scale this 